Okay, for this tessellation, we're going to do another bird, but we're going to switch things up a bit. Uh, as you can see, I have a grid already created. And to create this grid, what I did was I went up here to the wrench, slash spanner, go to canvas, drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and the grid size, I put it 90, which is my standard. And we did a done. And then I used my square and my shapes, which is set for 26%. I tap that on. I did my selection arrow up here at the top for snapping, magnetics and snapping on. Do a select, snap it to here, snap it to there, just like before. But if we change this to blue, up the opacity, and click done, you will see that we are not directly on the line. So we put it on the line there, and it's too far up there. To fix that, what I did was I went to the selection tool. That's the S ribbon. I went from automatic to rectangle, selected a rectangle, Go to the Actions menu, Add, and then I selected Cut, and then Paste. And that put that on its own layer here. And what that allows me to do is zoom way in and tap down until that is properly centered. And then I merged it down. I did the same thing with the other side, and then to get the uh, grid going up and down, I turned on Drawing Assist on another layer. Put the lines in and tap them over so they were centered. And I did that going all the way across, copied it, flipped it, and did it for the down. And that gave us this nice grid. I chose to make my big boxes blue and the little boxes gray. So that's just the quick how to set up. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it the same way I did on the other one. This is just for my convenience. As I said, we are going to do another bird, but it's going to be a different bird than we did before. I decided I wanted to see if I could change things up. And you'll remember that before what we did 
was we created that sort of thing. Actually, I think it was closer to that, but what we're going to do today is try to make something a little more fierce. So, I'm going to arch down from this corner to this same point. We'll edit that shape, straighten out the curve a little bit, and that one didn't go very well. Let's undo it and try again. And I'm going to go to the center of this. And we want this to be centered on that crosshair just like before. And now I'm going to create a beak. I'm going to go down. And I'm going to hook this way. And then I'm, oops, I need to go this way. And we now have a hooked beak. And we can finish this off going up just like before. Got to make sure that the corners are in the right places. And already we're starting to look much nicer. Much more sleek. If you count over, that's one, two, three, four, and a third boxes. Create the beak to go up to this box, and then finish off the curve. And once again, we duplicate this. We tap on it, and we rotate it 90 degrees. And I want these to match. If we lower the opacity of both of these layers and go down here at the bottom to snapping, turn magnetics and snapping off, now we can get these two rounded corners directly together. And that gives us the top of the wing and the head of our predatory bird. Now what I want to do is go up another layer and we're just going to go down three lines and actually I'm going to lower the opacity to start out with. And we'll start here. One, two, three and a straight line. And make sure that that is right there on that crosshair. And then I'm going to go to this point right here. with another straight line. And what I want to do to finish off with is to create a curve not too severe there, but a curve nevertheless it looks about like this. And 
And now, when I duplicate this layer, and I go 90 minus, and put this here, we have a fanned out tail, which is much more like a predatory bird. We just have to match this up here and make sure that it matched up on this side. Sometimes it doesn't, and that's good enough. And we have our bird of prey image. The only thing we have to do now is dress it up a bit. So I'm going to go up a layer, turn the opacity down, because I want to create a guide. I'm going to arc this like this. Now, if you don't put this part in, you can end up with a hawk, a kingfisher, some other bird of prey. But what we're going to do today is a bald eagle. So I'm going to use this hook beak here. And I don't like the way that went, so I'm going to erase it. And I'll erase that part and redo it. There we go. We can delete this. Let's go ahead and merge these layers together after we put the opacity to max. Almost forgot that, Ken. Not a smart thing to do. There we go. Merge these together. That's layer two. Put the opacity back down. That'll be important later. And then I'm going to create our wings by putting curves in here. I'm going to angle this one down a little bit further and do one here and angle it even further. And then I want to get rid of these extra bumps that I created. But not the main line. There we go. And then we want to put in the tail. And I'm not really curving these, once again, because I want a harsher, more predatory image. Speaking of which, he's got to be able to see. So we'll give him a hunter's eye. And we have a nice bald eagle shape flying. We're going to embellish this a bit, though. What we can do is if we're going to have the main body all one color, we're still going to need to indicate the body Let's see. Just so we can see it. And right here, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to put a fish. I'm going to go up a layer. Put in some ovals with little hooks. Let's go ahead and up the opacity on this. And erase the inside here. Merge these down. I am going to have a different color for this part and this part because that's just the way I want to do it so let's delete layer 3 there layer 2 what I want to do is go from the tip of this beak in a nice curve like that and it says art created so I did it right edit that shape put it right there Make sure it's okay there. And then we can tap out. And the fish is unhappy. There we go. Now he looks unhappy. And we have our bird that'll do our tessellation. So let's go ahead and tessellate that real quick, the same way we did before. We've got our layer 2 here at 50%. We're going to duplicate it. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, which allows us to put here. I don't want to do that one yet. I want to do this one. which would be ninety minus, is that correct? Nope, ninety. Oh, well, silly me. It's the same one. Okay. Let's go ahead and match these up just like we did on our other bird and of course the point of this lesson is you can take your basic idea and change it around to make it something completely different in this case I am creating a predator rather than like a seed bird or something. Now, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to turn magnetics on for the snapping. And that way I can fill in this part of our grid and this is why I didn't want to do that side first we're going to duplicate this and this time we're going to go minus 90 because I have magnetics on, every rotation is 15 degrees, so it's easier to get to 90 this way. It does, however, jerk around a lot. Let's go ahead and get this matched in. I'm going to turn off the magnetics.
and match that in there. Duplicate. Turn magnetics back on so I can go straight up. And we just have this last corner to do, which is going to be, I think, 180. We'll duplicate the original one, rotate it 180, and it should fit in here just fine. And it does. I'm going to zoom in here, turn the magnetics off again, and as you can see, this needs to fit here. And this needs to fit here in order to have all of our blue square filled out. So, that's this one. Duplicate it again. We're going to turn the magnetics on again and go down. I like to go past that way when I zoom in I can tap it at the shortest place. And then we need this one. Duplicate it. And it's going to go here. Make sure that you are tapping parallel to the central blue dot. If you tap above it, then you're actually going to go that direction. If you tap directly above or to the right, left, whatever, then you are going to just go that direction. A nice straight 90 degree turn. All right, and here's the next trick that I figured out. First things first. We're going to group all of these together in case we've made a mistake and we need to correct it later. We'll duplicate it, turn off the bottom one, and flatten the top one. Then we go down to layer one, use our S ribbon to do the selection and choose automatic, and tap outside of our blue grid box. Go up to layer 2 and clear. And now when we check the size, it's 1084 by 1084. It is exactly a square. So we can do fit to canvas. And we have this nice great big square going on here. But I forgot to max it out first, so I'm going to have to duplicate it several times. There we are. Now it's all solid black. And let's check to make sure 
Yeah, you notice how when I do this, I'm getting a bit of a white line around them. So that's just a little extra fuzz that I personally want to get rid of. And I do that by selecting each area. And once I know that each area is selected, I tap on it and I say clear. We can now invert this. Turn all those off. Do a copy. I will invert it back so we can see it. Something's not right. Oh. There we go, we're back on track. I am sorry about that. Sometimes anybody forgets stuff. So we're now going to go here to our build on three. We've got this bird tessellation that we did, but I'm just going to create a new one. We'll go down to shape, edit, import, paste. See, that's not right. Let's try again. We go down to Grain, Edit, Import, Paste. We change the zoom from Cropped to Follow Size. Under Apple Pencil, we turn the Opacity all the way to None. Under Properties, we're going to give it a maximum size of 500. And we're going to call this Eagle Tessellation. There we go. Create three set point, save it. And now we can make our eagle pattern. Color it in, and we're good to go. A lot of birds are distinct for their beaks. Toucans have very large beaks. Uh, seed eaters like budgies and cockatiels and whatnot, and parrots, you know, have a distinct beak, distinct coloring patterns that you can do and draw in here. If you are on the Procreate for Beginner forum, then you will see me post this video, and I would very much like to see you post your own versions of birds. You can do the eagle, of course, and you can do the bluebird or robin that I did the last time. Or make up your own. I want to see what you can come up with. 
And I hope you have enjoyed this. And I hope you have a wonderful day.